for years, Congress has played a significant role in authorizing nuclear sanctions on Iran. And I'm proud to have taken a lead road in what has been a bipartisan effort to pass a series of sanctions that more than anything else has been responsible for Iran's decision to enter negotiations on its nuclear program. Now, the legislation that Senator Kirk and I have drafted would signal to the Iranian regime that there will be more consequences if they choose not to reach a final deal. This morning, however, many of my Democratic colleagues and I will have sent a letter to the President telling him that we will not support passage of the kirk Menendez bill on the Senate floor until after March 24, and only if there is no political framework agreement, because as the letter states, we remain hopeful that diplomacy will succeed in reversing Iran's ability to develop a nuclear weapon capability in accordance with the timeline that the P5 plus 1 and Iran negotiating teams have set for themselves, which is March 24, 2015, for a political framework agreement. But we also say in this letter that we remain deeply skeptical that Iran is committed to making the concessions required to demonstrate to the world that its nuclear program is exclusively peaceful by March 24. The fact is that negotiators are now in their 18th month of talking, and senior administration officials continue to forecast the chance of reaching an agreement at less than 50-50. In the interim, Iran has breached the Joint Plan of Action at least once and made a mockery of it a second time by trying to illicitly procure parts for the Iraq reactor in violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Iran is procrastinating because the longer the negotiations last, the further the P5 moves in their direction. We have slowly shifted positions during the last 18 months after dismantling Iran's nuclear infrastructure, the Iraq reactor, the Fordo enrichment facility, Iran's 19,000 centrifuges, to allow Iran to keep all those elements in some form while we settle for alarm bells that will tell us only when it's too late, when Iran has breached and without prospective sanctions that are ready to be implemented, our only op option may very well be what some of my friends are worried about, either a military one or accepting Iran as a nuclear weapons state. Neither are desirable. At the same time, Iran has stonewalled the IAEA's access to key sites where weaponization activities <coughs> took place. They are looking for and seem likely to get an agreement that kicks this most serious issue down the road to be addressed at a later date after a deal is signed. I can't begin to understand how we would build an inspection and verification regime or how long the agreement must last until we know how far they've come towards building a nuclear weapon. Finally, I want to make a few points clear about the substance of the Kirk Menendez bill as drafted. It would not violate the Joint Plan of Action. The Joint Plan of Action limits the imposition of new sanctions during the talks, and our bill would not impose sanctions until one month after the final deadline runs out at the end of June. We also provide the President with additional flexibility through monthly waivers if he believes that they may be on the verge of a deal and it is in the national security interest to do so. Only after two years of failed negotiations would the legislation trigger additional sanctions. In my view, we need Iran to understand that there are consequences if they fail to reach a comprehensive agreement. And the consequences are closing loopholes in existing sanctions and expanding sectoral sanctions. At the end of the day, Iran must make up its mind about what is more important, its nuclear weapons program or the welfare of its people. Until now, Iran has not been motivated to make such a decision. In my view, a strong bipartisan bill that outlines the consequences of failure could be the motivator that Iranian leaders need to make the hard decisions. And Mr. Chairman, I'll just say, as someone who voted against the war in Iraq, when many of my colleagues, who now seem to be doves, voted for it, which was a monumental mistake in my view, and as someone who has worked hard to create the opportunity so that we don't have the only option of being a a military attack or accepting a nuclear-armed Iran. What I don't want to see 
and what I will not submit to uh, is having the aspirations that we had in North Korea, which ended up not turning into the aspirations we desired, but turning up into North Korea being a nuclear weapons state for which we are paying enormously today. And that is a test of history and judgment that those who supported that at that time, I think, uh, will come to regret as well, should come to regret as well. And that's why I, for one, don't want to see it happen a second time.